Senator Rubio, you said in the last debate that ISIS is the most dangerous jihadist group in the history of mankind and that it will take overwhelming U.S. force to defeat them. Can you specifically tell us what you mean by overwhelming force? Well, first we need to understand who they are. ISIS is not just a jihadist group, they're an apocalyptic group. They want to trigger a showdown in a city named Dabiq between the West and themselves, which they believe will trigger the arrival of their messianic figure. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. The reason why it's important to understand that is because these are not groups that are just going to go away on their own. They are going to have to be defeated. And I believe they need to be defeated on the ground by a ground force made up primarily of Sunni Arabs. It will take Sunni Arabs to reject them ideologically and defeat them militarily. That will require a coalition of Iraqis and Syrians that are also Sunnis, but it will also require the cooperation of Jordanians, Egyptians. We should ask more of the Saudis. That will need to be backed up with more U.S. Special Operation Forces alongside them. And it will have to be backed up with increased airstrikes. And we're going to have to strike them, not just in Iraq and in Syria, but in every other part of the world where they've now created hubs of operation. They have affiliates in over a dozen countries across this planet. They have a sophisticated network of uh, radicalizing people here in the homeland and around the world. But it all begins by taking away their safe operating spaces with a ground force that a U.S.-led coalition takes on. You Again, Senator Rubio, you've already said ISIS is the most dangerous jihadist group in the history of mankind. So that would make it more dangerous than Al-Qaeda, the insurgents we fought in Iraq. We committed hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops to fight those groups. So if ISIS is the most dangerous group in history, why not commit a large U.S. ground force? Because they currently occupy Sunni cities and villages. Sunni cities and villages can only truly be liberated and held by Sunnis themselves. If they are held by Shia, it will trigger sectarian violence. The Kurds are incredible fighters, and they will liberate the Kurdish areas, but Kurds cannot and do not want to liberate and hold Sunni villages and towns. It will take Sunni fighters themselves in that region to take those villages and cities and then to hold them and avoid the sort of sectarian violence that follows in the past. And why that is important is because if Sunnis are not able to govern themselves in these areas, you are going to have a successor group to ISIS. Al ISIS is a successor group of Al-Qaeda. In fact, they broke away from Al-Qaeda because as horrible as Al-Qaeda is, ISIS thought Al-Qaeda was not radical enough. This is who we're dealing with, and they have more money than Al-Qaeda ever had. Well, Martha, what, would you Martha, do, what would you do differently to try to get those Sunni forces? They have not been coming forward. Well, the problem with the Sunni forces in the region is they don't trust this administration. This administration cut a deal with their mortal enemies, the Shia, in Iran. It poisoned the well with these countries. It makes it very difficult to cooperate with them as a result. They also, by the way, understand what real U.S. air power looks like. They saw the Iraq War. They saw up close to so Afghanistan. They know what air power looks like when the United States is committed to the cause. And they see the airstrikes that are being conducted now, and they say to themselves, that's not real commitment. We know what real commitment looks like. The Georgianian king was in Washington three weeks ago. He told everyone who would listen that they have begged for permission from the coalition to target caravans. And the coalition, meaning U.S. leadership on the ground, would not allow them to proceed with those airstrikes. Mr. Trump, thank you very much, Senator Rubio. Mr. Trump.